A Daily Walk with Pastor in the Bible, Friday, July 17th, Psalm 92. But you, O Lord, are on high forever, for behold your enemies, O Lord, for behold your enemies shall perish. All evildoers shall be scattered. But you have exalted my horn like that of the wild ox, you have poured over me fresh oil. My eyes have seen the downfall of mine enemies. My ears have heard the doom of my evil assailants. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar of Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. They still bear fruit in old age. They are ever full of sap and green. To declare that the Lord is upright, he is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. The Old Testament reading is from 1 Samuel, the first chapter. There was a certain man from Remathem, Zephim, of the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, the son of Jerham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuf, an Ephrathite, he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, the name of the other was Pahina. And Pahina had children, and Hannah had no children. Now this man used to go up year by year from his city to worship and to sacrifice to the Lord of hosts at Shiloh, where the two sons of Eli, Hephni and Phinehas, were priests of the Lord. On the day when Elkona sacrificed, he would give portions to Panina his wife, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah he gave a double portion, because he loved her, though the Lord had closed her womb. And her rival used to provoke her grievously, to irritate her, because the Lord had closed her womb. So it went year by year. As often as she went up to the house of the Lord, she used to provoke her. Therefore Hannah wept, and would not eat. And Elkona, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep, and why do you not eat? And why is your heart sad? Am I not more to you than ten sons? After they had eaten and drunk in Shiloh, Hannah rose. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. She was deeply distressed, and prayed to the Lord, and wept bitterly. And she vowed a vow, and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your servant, and remember me, and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a son, I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall touch his head. As she continued praying before the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was speaking in her heart, only moving her lips, and her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli took her to be a drunken woman. And Eli said to her, How long will you go on being drunk? Put away your wine from you. But Hannah answered, No, my lord, I am a woman troubled in spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have poured out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman, for all along I have been speaking out my great anxiety and vexation. Then Eli answered, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant you your petition that you have made to him. And she said, let your servant find favor in your eyes. Then the woman went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. Then they went back to their house at Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah his wife, and the Lord remembered her. And in due time Hannah conceived and bore a son, and she called his name Samuel. For she said, I have asked for him from the Lord.
The epistle is from Galatians, the fifth chapter. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Look, I, Paul, say to you, that if you accept circumcision, Christ will be of no advantage to you. I testify again to every man who accepts circumcision that he is obligated to keep the whole law. You are severed from Christ. You who would be justified by the law, you have fallen away from grace. For through the Spirit, by faith, we ourselves eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith working through love. You were running well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion is not from him who called you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. I have confidence in the Lord that you will take no other view than mine, that the one who is troubling you will bear the penalty, whoever he is. But if I, brothers, still preach circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross would be removed. I wish those unsettling you would emasculate themselves. For you were called to freedom, brothers, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you do not consume one another. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For those are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the thing you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. A Writing of Martin Luther this is the freedom and the slavery of which Paul speaks in Romans chapter 6, verses 20 and 22. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regards to righteousness. But now that you have been set free from sin, you have become slaves of God. For he who is free from sin has become a slave of righteousness. But he who is a slave of sin is free from righteousness and vice versa. Christ, he says, has made us free from this freedom. It is a spiritual freedom, one to be preserved in the spirit. It is not that heathen kind, which even the pagan Persius knew was not enough. It is freedom from the law, but in a contrary way to what usually takes place among men. For it is human freedom when laws are changed without affecting any change in men. But it is Christian freedom 
when men are changed without changing the law. Consequently, the same law that was formerly hateful to the free will now becomes a delight, since love is poured in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. In this freedom, he teaches us, we must stand strongly and steadfastly, because Christ, who fulfilled the law and overcame sin for us, sent the Spirit of love into the hearts of those who believe in him. This made them righteous and lovers of the law, not because of their own works, but freely, because it is freely bestowed by Christ. Martin Luther Both far and wide, since thou, O Lord, for all hast died, grant us the will and grace provide to love them all in thee. Prayer of the Day the Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, since you have caused all Holy Scripture to be written for our learning, grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Merciful God, for freedom you have set us free through Jesus' liberating death and resurrection. In this freedom, Teach us to live in the fruit of the Spirit given us in our baptism, that we may bear in our bodies the fulfillment of the law, as we love our neighbors as ourselves. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Luther's Morning Prayer I thank thee, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen or Luther's Evening Prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me, Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.